Two. Hey guys, gather around. Uh, my name is Cody with Platform 9, and uh, a big part of this event, you guys have been hearing about OpenStack in two weeks. I'm going to tell you guys about OpenStack in two hours. Right? So Platform 9 is a SaaS offering, uh, and we're the next generation open cloud. So um, the, the cloud has created this uh, chaos in IT and ops that's really segregated a lot of different platforms, right? So uh, in, in the past, you've had your, your VMware stack, and then you had your Linux guys, and then containers came around, and you guys kind of built another silo for that. And then, hey, look, shiny public clouds. Let's build another team and, and manage that public cloud, right? So and in each of these technologies, what ends up happening is you have proprietary lock-in, right? You're paying VMware or the public clouds. Um, you have fragmented siloed teams, right, which doesn't really help you scale and kind of slows you down. Um, and, and the cost skyrockets. Every new technology that you bring on board kind of rises that cost. So what do you do, right? So our approach is to uh, kind of merge that private cloud with the public cloud and, and really bring those together, right? But we're not doing it like everyone else has been doing it uh, in the past by uh, creating a new proprietary API uh, and, and new service for you to learn and maintain. Um, we, we felt that uh, that's fundamentally flawed, right? Um, and we want to uh, kind of bring those together under one umbrella. And, uh, oh man, this thing builds. Let me just build it out. Um, and, and really allow you to uh, take your VMware environment, your containers, uh, your uh, Linux KVM nodes, as well as all three of your public clouds under a single umbrella and basically allow us to do the installation, monitoring, troubleshooting, and upgrades of your OpenStack environment, as well as your Kubernetes platform and your serverless platform as well. Okay? And uh, we deliver this as a SaaS offering, so we host that control plane, and you bring your compute from anywhere in the world. So, so why Platform 9, right? Uh, one of the big reasons is that we're purely open source. When we're managing those public cloud resources, we're doing that with the OpenStack APIs, okay? So you don't have to learn a new proprietary API. We've completely open sourced those drivers. You might have saw us on stage at the Barcelona Summit uh, when we uh, un unleashed Omni, right? OpenStack Omni with uh, AWS integration into OpenStack. Um, throughout the, the subsequent summits, right, we went over to Boston. Uh, we also did uh, the one in Australia where we released our GCP support as well as our Azure support for OpenStack. Okay? Uh, so completely open source, giving that back to the OpenStack community. And we're giving you a unified cloud experience so that you can truly manage things through that single unified API, have a single web UI to manage everything and bring it all together. And uh, we're really the industry's only SaaS offering out there that allows you to do all of this without weeks of heavy lifting, right? Canonical's happy about two weeks to get up and running. We could do it in two hours. Uh, so, so these are some of the, the, the key benefits and outcomes. These are uh, all of our customers. You might recognize a few names uh, on the slide, namely Autodesk and Veritas are some very popular names in the tech industry here. Um, but but uh, Snapfish had an extremely um, cool uh, or use case that, that we could really help deliver with our serverless platform. So Platform 9 has built a serverless platform uh, built on top of Kubernetes, um, and we call that Fission. It's completely open source. You could check it out at fission.io. Um, but it has the ability to um, do event-based um, functions and have those uh, execute on the fly, right? So Snapfish saw this and said, hey, look, we have a very event-driven model. Whenever somebody uploads a picture, a video to our site, we need something to happen, right? So um, they were able to leverage our serverless platform. And uh, what this meant uh, for them was to, they got 82% faster code to production, right? They were able to scale horizontally using our serverless platform rather than uh, do it uh, their old-fashioned way with VMs. Um, Nanometrics also has an uh, extremely cool use case, right? They're a, a legacy big data application. They are basically um, running measurements on microchips and, and doing some big data analytics on that. And through the power of auto scaling and heat, um, we were able to help them get up and running and um, 
really leverage all of their uh, infrastructure in all of their data centers and treat that more like a cloud rather than um, legacy virtual machines. And then with auto scaling groups, as they kicked off their jobs, those jobs would scale up to size. When that job was finished, those compute resources went back in the pool and the rest of the jobs scaled up to consume them. So um, with those guys, they went from a utilization rate of their hardware. They were only using their hardware about 19% of the time. It was sitting idle, not being used, because they had a, a scheduling issue of getting the hardware where they needed it at the, at the time. So with us virtualizing this and building auto scaling on top of it, we were able to take that over 70% utilization of their existing hardware. So they didn't have to buy any new hardware that year, and we saved them a ton of money. It was awesome. Um, Autodesk is unique. Uh, they were a cloud stack shop uh, back in the day. Uh, they had uh, sprawling technologies across VMware, cloud stack, AWS, um, and they really needed to kind of get a handle on all of this. And, and they were really uh, suffering from the issues we talked about in the first slide was, I have all of these siloed teams, and we have all of this different technology, and I need to bring it together, and I need it to be manageable, and I need everybody on the same page. How do we do that? So um, these are our, our big flagship customer for our Omni product where we were able to really deliver um, them with AWS, with the OpenStack APIs. Uh, they have a huge VMware investment, and if you know anything about Autodesk, they actually integrate with some of the VMware tools. So they had to keep that hypervisor around, uh, as well as utilize a lower cost KVM hypervisor that's not um, needing that integration that they had. So we, we built them a true unified hybrid cloud. Um, and then on top of that, the kind of the next forefront was they wanted to step into containers. Right? So with our platform being as it is, um, containers are, are built in. You, you get those uh, with the platform. You can run them on bare metal or on top of virtual machines or in the public clouds. So it, it kind of gave them that stepping stone of bringing all their stuff together and then using that same platform by not creating another silo for containers, but using the same uh, platform there. Uh, with uh, consolidating 11 data centers, um, those guys were uh, you know, real happy with able to, to pull it all together. Veritas, I think everybody's heard of Veritas, security company, right? Um, their, their big issue was uh, they needed to get up and running, uh, they needed to be competitive in the space with uh, containers very quickly. And they didn't have time to build an entire team out to learn how to build and scale Kubernetes, right? Uh, they were building their applications, they wanted to deliver it, they knew they wanted to containerize it and deliver it that way. Um, but they didn't have uh, the, the time to actually build out a team, learn Kubernetes, learn how to scale it, learn how to upgrade it, maintain it, troubleshoot it, all of that, right? So they said, hey, look, this cool SaaS company over here is doing all that. They're doing all the hard work, and we can just consume this SaaS offering and deploy Kubernetes clusters anywhere. Um, so that's what Veritas really liked about our product. Um, they were able to beat their competition to market, uh, got their 30% quicker um, than they uh, forecasted, um, and they're leveraging our, our product with, uh, with Kubernetes. Um, Cadence Design Systems is um, a, a really cool use case where they were spending a ton of money with our friends VMware. Um, and their, their use cases really weren't leveraging all, all of the features of the, the VMware platform. Uh, they really just needed uh, hypervisors. So uh, we went in there and, and, and looked at their use case and they have some high performance uh, computing needs that they wanted to run on top of KVM that was running well on VMware. Um, and we really helped them uh, you know, build those images and get that up and running and stand up that OpenStack cloud for them so that they can um, you know, run their existing workloads that they were already running on top of um, KVM. And then we brought in their old uh, VMware environment as well. We discovered that environment and ran KVM and VMware side by side in that unified way like we were talking about previously. So again, they have one platform, one entry point to manage all of their infrastructure. Um, this resulted in 86% cost savings, right? Uh, and, and these guys have really tested the limits. This is a very large uh, OpenStack deployment. Uh, and they've really tested the limits of uh, Open vSwitch and uh, OpenStack and KVM all running uh, in, inside of their environment. Uh, these guys are, are scaling up to thousands of hosts worldwide um, and uh, a, a very good customer for us. Um, so, so this is Platform 9's market presence, right? So um, we have, this, this is a, a little bit dated. We, we're uh, over 70 enterprise customers now. Um, we've integrated with a ton of different um, 
uh, DevOps integrations, right? The, Hashi, the suite of HashiCorp tools. Who doesn't love HashiCorp, right? So all of their stuff works with us. Um, and uh, we were managing over 300 OpenStack cloud regions worldwide. That's more than any of the public clouds. Over 300 regions. Uh, and Platform 9 is managing those. We're upgrading those from uh, version to version of OpenStack um, and doing that. Again, some of those names that we had talked about, uh, Autodesk and Cadence, Veritas are on this slide, but other customers like LogMeIn and, and uh, Scality um, are also uh, customers of Platform 9 that are using, utilizing our platform. Um, and uh, HPE has taken a, uh, a shine at us and has definitely inve in de invested in our company, so Pathfinder uh, there. Um, and uh, we're, we're part of the core technology inside of the HPE OneSphere hybrid IT solution. So if you guys have seen HPE talk about their new cloud platform, their OneSphere platform, Platform 9 is a core piece of that. And you know, throughout the years, we've collected quite a few awards, right? Uh, yeah, so, so I wanted to talk a little bit about the technology uh, behind the scenes here and, and kind of how do we deliver this SaaS managed platform that allows you to run workloads on premise but have a, a SaaS controller manage all of this, right? So, so really that, that comes down to our uh, PF9 host agent uh, uh, that we deploy on your nodes on premise. And then we have our resource manager and communications plane that we host inside the platform, uh, inside the control plane. Uh, we then have a, a, a management cluster that allows you to visualize everything that we're doing here, as well as uh, orchestrate the building of OpenStack and Kubernetes nodes. So um, when you come into our platform and say, hey, I want to spin up Kubernetes, you'll, you'll create your bare metal nodes. You will say, put Ubuntu or CentOS or Red Hat on top of them. Uh, and then put our host agent on, the, on that. Then you go into our UI and say, hey, I want to take these five hosts and turn them into a Kubernetes cluster. Right? Um, and, and when that happens, we say, OK, we're going to make these two nodes a master node, and we're going to install etcd and APIs and schedulers and all of the, the stuff that makes Kubernetes special and, and work really cool. Um, and, and then we're going to turn the other nodes into um, worker nodes by you know, putting in Docker and, and all of that. So this is, a, this is the same concept that we go through with OpenStack as well. Our OpenStack deployment allows you to um, take the exact same approach, put that agent on the systems, and then authorize them for Nova nodes, or Cinder nodes, or Glance nodes, um, so that you can um, really have a single location to manage all of your infrastructure. And then most importantly, we do all the heavy lifting, right? We do the installation of all, all the products. Uh, we do the 24 by 7 monitoring, so you don't have to build the huge NOC and operations team that are aware of OpenStack and Kubernetes and all of their nuances and, uh, and whatnot. If there's a problem, we do the diagnos diagnosis and we, we fix that for you. And then we do the versioning, right? We do the upgrades. If you need to go from, uh, and we have a successful track record all the way back to OpenStack Havana of upgrading all of our customers to the newer and latest version of OpenStack. Right? Uh, and we've been doing this with Kubernetes since the 1.4 days. We're deploying uh, 1.10 coming out soon. Um, and, and so we, we do all of that versioning uh, and upgrades for the customers. Um, so P Platform 9 is also uh, heavily involved in the, the community, spe specifically for um, OpenStack and Kubernetes. Right, We're a big part of the open source community. but. Uh, Kubernetes uh, is really where we were able to dive in and, and contribute quite a bit. Um, so one of the big things that we've contributed to the open source community is Fission. Fission is a completely um, agnostic um, serverless platform. You can run it anywhere in the world. So if, you're, if you like the idea of Amazon Lambda, um, you could do that, but you can run it in any data center that you want. Um, and it allows you to write small functions of code highly distribute those, run them on demand, and only consume the amount of compute you need at that given time while that function's running. Super cool. Um, it's completely open source. Check it out at fission.io. Um, and, and then we've also built our spotter uh, deal, where you can actually uh, build Kubernetes clusters on top of the major public clouds using spot instances. So the, the benefit of Kubernetes is that you can lose a compute node or lose a master node, and your application stays up and running. So if you lose your bid on a spot instance, that's fine. We'll replace it with another instance of maybe a different size or from a different cloud that's around that same price. 
but your workload and your deployment never goes offline, right? Um, so this is uh, some of our, uh, our roadmap and, and things that we've done over uh, the last year, right? So we've uh, integrated um, single sign-on into Kubernetes. Um, we've built high availability Kubernetes control planes. Uh, you can see back in the uh, uh, 2016 days, we were running Kubernetes 1.4. Um, we, we've then built, uh, we built Fission, built that spot market that we talked about, and then we've constantly upgraded Kubernetes 1.6, 1.7, 1.8. We're about to release 1.10. Um, and, and then we've also tightly integrated our Kubernetes platform with OpenStack so that you can intelligently deploy a Kubernetes environment on top of OpenStack and spreads your masters across multiple availability zones, utilize the, the Neutron networking to wire all of this stuff together, um, and le leverage heat auto-scaling groups to keep those systems alive and healthy um, while you're running. Um, so, so we talked a little bit about this on the Kubernetes side and kind of how that worked, but um, on the OpenStack side, uh, it, it's a, a little bit heavier of a product for that control plane. All of the services in blue are things that you don't have to worry about, touch, monitor, or host or support, right? So we're maintaining the uh, RabbitMQ message bus, the databases, the Nova controllers, the APIs, Cinder, all of that stuff that is horribly complex and difficult to install and maintain, we're doing that for you. And all you have to do is bring your compute and put our host agent on it and authorize that node, right? Again, with OpenStack, we do the deployment, monitoring, troubleshooting, and upgrades of this platform for you, okay? We talked a little bit about some of our key contributions to the OpenStack community. Uh, I talked about Omni heavily, right? So that's the AWS and Google and uh, Azure drivers for OpenStack. Um, but we've also built VMHA, and uh, built on top of the Masakari framework, and we've completely open sourced this. So what this is doing is taking the high availability that's built into, that you'll see out of the box from VMware's hypervisor, and we built a similar technology to run directly with OpenStack and KVM. So if you have a legacy uh, workload that's not natively cloud-ready, that you can't put behind load balancers and scale out horizontally, and you want to run that um, in production, you're going to need a hypervisor that will power that VM back on if that hypervisor dies, right? So that's what we've built. We built that for... Um, OpenStack, uh, we call it VMHA. Um, we've u heavily utilized the Masakari framework. That, that's an open source, uh, OpenStack project. Um, and you can see that we've, um, throughout the years, done our upgrades from Havana to Juno to Newton, Liberty, um, and, and uh, we're working on the Pike merge right now. Um, part of our product um, also works. We have, we have Designate, Ironic, um, and uh, all the other good, beautiful OpenStack services that you know and love, right? Um, so thank you very much for your time. Uh, looks like I have about two minutes left, maybe seven minutes. I think you said seven minutes, right? Uh, for questions. Anybody has questions, you can shout them out or come up here and talk to me privately. Um, I'd like to thank you guys.